The Mysteries of the Veil. You've had questions about it since Lightfall's release, and today we have some answers. We'll explore its connections to the Traveler, the Darkness, and how it's shaping the destiny of our world. This past week, we've learned how to use the Veil and Savathun's wish to enter the Traveler, and in this video, we're going to explain how that's going to happen. This week, we learned more information about the Veil. Previously, we've been getting hints since Lightfall's release, but the Veil is a mysterious and powerful artifact that embodies the intersection of consciousness and quantum mechanics, resonating with both the Light of the Traveler and the Darkness. The Traveler of the Light, the Darkness of the Veil. The Traveler and Veil might have been one at some point in the past, as suggested by Osiris. Traveler is the domain of the physical, while the veil is that of thought and consciousness. Together, they can create this final shape, changing our universe forever. This week, the veil is described as tracing the shape of consciousness. We've seen its consciousness powers with the creation of the witness and the many minds, but we've learned that it's unstable and poses a risk. It's mentioning that observing the path that the Witness took through this portal alters it, making it too dangerous to cross. Others have tried like in the Season of the Deep opening cutscene and have failed. Over the last couple of years, we've become more aware of the Ley Lines of the Awoken. Ley Lines are paracausal pathways that allow a user to traverse large distances. Here's what Petra said about them in Season of the Lost. I will tell you how. Imagine the universe as a set of coins, stacked one on top of the other. The top coin is our reality. The bottom, the ascendant plane. Between them lies an intermeshing of ever-shifting pathways, known as ley lines. Almost all the ancient pathways are now defunct, but beings of paracausal ability can navigate and rebuild them. This is the art of wayfinding. Savathun's wish, what we've been trying to decipher this whole season, can integrate the ley lines into the veil, allowing for a singular safe passage into the pale heart. So this implies that only one individual can be sent through the Veil and not an entire army, which we kind of need to defeat the Witness, but there could be some ways to work around this. This is why Mara got upset this week, as Riven did not hold her part of the agreement. We need the Guardians to enter, not just one person, so what do we do now? Savathun's wish can weave the Ley Lines into the Veil, entangle them for a moment. But you will not send an army on the wings of a wish. Only one. One? Explain this deception. Savathun's wish grants one singular passage. No more. You knew from the beginning. You sought to twist our aspirations as your kind always does. Mara. One. Maybe all we need. But on the plus side, as discussed, it's nice that Riven made it clear now before the wish happens at the end of the season, for example, in the hopes that Mara can accept it here rather than backstab her at the last moment. The idea of using the ley lines as a means of travel is explored. These lines don't touch the Traveler or the Veil, and not even Mara can command them to do so with her awoken magic powers. The plan here involves using Riven to imprint the Ley Lines into the Veil, allowing passage to the other side. One to send, she said. I believe the Witness had found a point of weakness, and exploited that point to pierce the Traveler's defenses. But the Witness did not gain entrance through an attack. It's Perry. There was no need to breach a door because 
through the Traveler's resistance, the way was left open. Its blast was meant to expel, but the witness redirected the flow of that intent with its own, using the veil. If Riven can imprint the ley lines into the veil, send one of our own to the other side without invitation, we can open the door. Once open, Guardian, the path to it matters not. Only that we're now able to cross the threshold. The veil will flow to that point around any obstacle. It may seem as though Riven promises more than is possible, but that is the foundation of a wish. So, the veil can trace the shape of consciousness. Riven can make a wish to imprint the ley lines, pathways of travel into the veil and allow someone to mesh through. The inside of the traveler, this pale heart, is like a dream realm. So I'm not sure if whoever goes through exists in an ethereal-like form, kind of like we see Cade, or if their actual body goes through. Osiris speaks of consciousness when talking about the veil, so to me it seems like that's transported through the ley lines, but I guess we'll find out, right? If you've been keeping up to date on some of the lore stuff and this season's quest, there was some bug text this week that explains who the one person that goes to the portal may be. So Bungie themselves kind of leaked it out early with this little bug, but I won't say it if you don't want it to be spoiled. The Witness's ambition is to achieve a final shape that erases the difference between desire and reality, which is something the Ahamkara need. Riven wants her clutch to survive if they are to be born. If the final shape happens, that's not possible. So while she always lives up to her tricks like the creatures often do, she needs to play nicely if she wants her species to survive. Otherwise, this was all for nothing and the Amkara are truly extinct. Some of Lightfall's campaign questions are also answered. The Witness found a weakness to exploit in the Traveler's defenses. The Witness didn't need to attack it. Instead, it used the Traveler's resistance to its advantage redirecting the flow of intent with its own using the veil. This is what happened in Lightfall. The veil was used to alter the Traveler to the likings of the Witness, breaching its heart inside and opening a portal. The veil was needed to harness these energies, a specific vision of reality that the Witness desires, one that meshes both light and dark to alter reality and consciousness on a broad scale to achieve the true final shape. The Traveler's power runs parallel to the forces of nature. Gravity, magnetism, sound, light. The Veil does this too. It is synchronized with the Traveler. Wherever the Traveler came from, the Veil may have as well. But at one time, they may have been... united. Part of a whole. <laughs> so... Wait, does this mean the light and darkness were the same once? One force? Dr. Essie believed so. I am not as convinced. But it is a theory. One many scholars will explore once this data is shared. But this data allowed me to calculate the telemetry of the beam the veil fired at the Traveler. When the Witness linked to the Veil through a ghost, it created a faster-than-light connection of darkness to the Traveler's light. A, a bridge to the Traveler's consciousness, if it has one. But the beam did not stop at the Traveler, rather a point inside of it. Inside? Wait, what's inside the Traveler? No one knows. But if the data I've been able to extrapolate here is correct, that is where the witness is now, inside the Traveler. So there you have it, Guardians. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Sometimes even though we get answers like in this week's quest, it's still hard to decipher what it all means when put together. But I hope these little bits of information are satisfying when it comes to the lore if you follow it very closely. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.